Hi, my name is Heather and welcome to another episode of my Etsy workshop series where we'll be building our digital shops from the ground up. Today, the digital item that we're going to be creating is a printable daily planner, and we're going to use Canva, which is a free program you can use to lay out your designs. I'm in Canva here, and I'm going to create a design for my download. And I want it to be a letter size paper because if it's going to be a digital download from Etsy, the majority of people are just going to be printing on an eight and a half by 11 standard letter size sheet of paper. I could pick one of these like flyer, but those ones have some weird like special settings in them. So I would rather just go to custom size and just create a file from scratch. So I'm going to make sure I pick inches here and then I'm just going to do eight and a half by 11 and create new design. Up here, I'll just name it something like Daily Planner. And I'm going to search in my templates for something like To-Do List. This one's pretty nice just because all you're looking for is that it has the elements that you want. It'll just save you some time. So I'll pick that one. And then now I'm just going to style it to make the design my own. If you have your own art that you want to pull in, then you can just go to uploads and you can do upload files and you can bring in any of your own art. But if you're not an artist, then you can always go to elements and you can pick some different elements from here. Let's say we want this to be a bird theme. I can search for bird and go to graphics. And then there's all kinds of stuff that we can pick from here. So you want to pick something that is like an illustration style that you like that kind of fits with the feel of what you want to do and whether you want it to be cute or kind of more mature you know that's all up to you and what you want to do for your design i think this little bird's cute and if i click on it then i can see the magic recommendations and then this might have other stuff from the same artist so this is a good little friend for him we can also add some other cute elements later, but now that I know the main elements of my design, I can kind of figure out if there's somewhere I want them to go. Like I can put one right here because really the notes section doesn't need to be this long. His little friend we can maybe put on this side so it kind of balances it out. I'll get rid of the appointments. They can just be added to the to-dos and then I'll move the priorities over. That way I can have my little birdie here. Now we're going to change the font and make it something cute and probably colorful too. So let's click on the title and then I'm going to go to my fonts over here and I can pick a different font. I like Amethyst, which by the way is a font that I uploaded myself. If you want to know how to do that, I can make a video on that as well. But you also have all these other fonts that you can choose from. But also, I don't think I want it to be in all caps. So this is typing in all caps. And if that's happening and you don't want it, then you can actually go up into the bar up here. And then this little button right here will make it so it goes lowercase. And actually, let's name it something like today's plan. I'm going to make this text bigger and maybe I'll center it. And then let's change the color. And I'm going to use the colors from these birds so that it just coordinates. So I'll use my little color dropper here and pick one of these colors. Also, I want to change the style of the boxes. So I'm going to go to elements again and I'm going to search for a rectangle frame. This is going to have some other little frames that we can use. Another fun thing is to do like a sticky note. I think those look really cute too. Here's a nice rectangle one. And maybe I'll only have five priorities. Keep it simple. And I'm going to change these fonts as well. Let's click on the font. I'll use that same font. And then I'm just going to click this again so that it goes to lowercase. And I'll make this bigger. We can also change the colors of this sticky note if we go to edit photo. And there are some filters that you can use. 
So we could pick something like pink or this mauve kind of color, or you can also go to adjust and you can change the temperature here and you can do tint. For these lines here, I'm going to get rid of those. I'm going to go to elements and under shapes, I'm going to click the rounded rectangle and I'll make this smaller and bring it up and then I'll make it white. And I think that's really cute. We could also put the numbers inside of it. I would also like to change the font of these numbers. I like that one. Now I'm just going to make copies of this rectangle and you can actually hold down Alt and then drag one down and then that'll make another one. So that's a really quick and easy way to make copies. Another thing I like to do is when you have like a bunch of things in a row, you can just take the first one and put it where you want it and the last one and then you can just grab everything and go to position and then you can say space evenly vertically and then that puts them all in a perfect spaced out column. And I can also do the same thing with these. I'm going to change the colors of these numbers also and the title here too. We do have a little bit of like weird extra space up here. So I'm going to move this over and then we could have a little thing where they write a little affirmation for the day. Let's do another sticky note. This one we can actually change the colors. And I think we will need to probably add like one more color to this because we have yellow and brown. Let's try green and let's make the tape a little bit darker so that we can actually see it. And I'll make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to bring the birdie to the front. And then I'm just going to write today's affirmation. And these lines are really far apart. So make sure you pay attention to your line spacing. I'm just going to go up here to spacing and I'll just bring the line spacing in. That feels a lot better to me. And then we can do today's to do. I'm going to delete this box and then let's look for a more rectangular sticky note. This one's cute, but the paper clip looks realistic, whereas the other elements are not. So I wouldn't want to mix those two styles together. This one's really pretty. So let's go ahead and use this one. And then I'm going to move it to the back. And I'm just going to take out today's to do and I'm just going to copy the top priorities over. These check boxes, I don't really like them either. They're kind of weird rectangles. And then instead of the lines, I do want to do those rounded rectangles anyways. So I'm just going to get rid of the lines also. And I'll just copy this over, make copies. And then again, I'm going to put the bottom one where I want it and have the top one where I want it. And then I'll select all of them, go to position, go to arrange, space evenly vertically. Now I'm going to add my little check boxes. So I'll go to elements and I'm going to pick a circle. I would normally do a square, but since these are rounded on the sides, I feel like a circle would just look better. Ooh, we can actually make it a little bigger. Maybe I'm going to make an outline on it and then make it white inside. So it's more like a check box, but I think the border does need to be thinner and definitely a different color. Now I'll just duplicate it. I may just want to have even space on either side of the to-do list items. So I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to select each of these guys. I'm just going to pull them out a little bit and maybe I'll move this to the left a bit. And I think I want this text to be a little bit bigger. So you can just kind of mess around with the sizes of things and the arrangement and see what you like. I'm going to change the color of the title to match the outline on the little check boxes. Maybe I'll make it a little darker so it stands out better. Now we can add our tomorrow to do. This doodle thing, I don't understand because there's lines. So how are you going to doodle? I do like that little note section. You can add in whatever you think would be useful. The next part is kind of fun. If you notice, everything is like spaced apart and not touching. And I think it looks a little more interesting when you kind of have more things overlapping. We could grab this one, rotate it a little bit if you're feeling adventurous. Maybe pull that one in a little bit. 
Now we can just look at some of the empty spaces here. I do feel like there's a pretty big empty space right here. So we could go ahead and fill that in with something, maybe like tree branches. And just to kind of balance it out, I'll put one down here as well. Maybe we can put some flowers in some of these little spots here just to kind of liven it up a bit. And notice I'm picking the same style of illustrations, like these flat colors and similar color scheme. So like if you're doing watercolor illustrations, then you're going to want to pick all watercolor elements try to make everything be in the same kind of style. Now that I look at it, the color of the word today's plan doesn't really seem to match everything. So let's change that color. Maybe I'll do a green now that we have a little more green in here. I think this is good for my final product. Now I'm going to go ahead and export it and we can make our thumbnail and upload it to Etsy. To export it, I'm just gonna go to share, download, I'm going to pick PDF print and you want to make sure you flatten your PDF. That way you don't have to worry about the fonts showing up properly or things showing up in the right place. You can go ahead and save it as RGB because a lot of people might actually use this digitally like on their iPad. And if they need to print it, they'll probably just be printing it from their home printer. So RGB should be fine. And then I'm going to do download. We also want to make a thumbnail. So let's also save it out as an image. So I'm going to go to share, download, PNG, and download. Now we can go back to our Canva homepage and do create a design. And we'll do custom size. And I'm going to pick pixels. We're going to do 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. Create new design. And this is going to be our thumbnail image. First, I'm going to go to uploads and I'm going to upload that new image that I saved out. And I'm gonna click on it to insert it in here. Now, the important thing with thumbnails is you want people to really be able to see your product. So if you have your items small like this, it's gonna be really hard to see it when it's an Etsy thumbnail because it's gonna be like this big. So if you kind of zoom out, you can see how big it's gonna be. So what I like to do is make it as big as possible and you can even make it a little bit bigger and then rotate it. And I just think that makes it look maybe a little more interesting, kind of dynamic, and you can kind of fit a little more in there. And then I always like to put some kind of background here. So let's go to elements and we can search for like a wood background, whatever you think kind of goes with your style. You can click on the one you want to try and then right click and do set images background and see if you like it. I don't really like how the lines are so dark that they really stand out a lot. It's better for your background to be a little more monotone. So if there was less contrast, then it wouldn't stand out so much. This one looks a little bit better and this one's even better. So as you notice, this one doesn't have those hard lines because of that, it doesn't draw your eye to it so much. And so the plan really stands out a lot more. The next thing we can do is add a little drop shadow to our plan here, and that'll just make it stand out a little more. If I click on it, I can go to edit photo and I'll scroll down here to shadows. I'll pick drop shadow and sometimes it takes a while. You've got to wait a little bit. This one is very dark and it's black. So you want your shadow to be the same color as the background. So I'm going to click on color here and pick like a brown. It looks a lot better here. Like it looks more like it belongs. The distance is really far right now. So it kind of looks like the paper is like floating. So I'm going to turn the distance down a bit. And I'll also turn the blur amount down a little bit. And then it won't stick out so far. The intensity is just the darkness. So I'll turn that down a little bit. And I really like that because it looks a lot more subtle and not so obvious. If you wanted to, you could add like a little pen here. So I could also go to elements and search for a pen and try to find like a realistic looking pen that has a transparent background. Maybe this one, but I would want the color to kind of go with these colors. So I could go to edit photo, see if there's a filter that looks good. Could even have it like overlap a little bit. 
Also notice that I have the shadow coming off on the right on the pen and coming from the right from the paper. If you do put in an element, try to make sure the shadows make sense. If I were to flip this around and have the shadow on the left side of the pen, then that would be really confusing. <laughs> so this is pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click share, download, and I'll pick PNG and download. Let's go to Etsy. I'm in my shop manager here and I'm going to go to listings and then I'm going to add a listing and we're going to click digital file and I made it and it's a finished product and I made it now. So I'll do the most recent one. Continue for your title. You want to make sure that you describe your product pretty well. Notice that I'm putting multiple keywords in here. So I'm putting daily planner, but I'm also putting to do list because I think these are the most important words that if someone searches for those words, then they're going to want to see my product. You don't want to totally stuff this with keywords, but you do want to try to include the most important ones. This is also a printable and it's a PDF. So those are good things to include too. Now for the photos, I'm going to click here and I'm going to add my thumbnail image. In a future video, we'll definitely work on creating more thumbnail images so that we have a lot of images for the customer to scroll through. Now we can scroll down and add our PDF file and then we can type in our description. First, we want to describe what it is and what it's for. And you can also use some catchy sentences to kind of pull the customer in. And these are also very good keywords to have. So we're having daily routine and motivated, daily tasks, prioritizing. So think about that and how you can include a lot of good keywords in your description, but not by just throwing them in. You want to work them into sentences. Also, I think it's important to include in here that you did design this yourself. And if it has your artwork in it, then definitely include that because there are some items on Etsy that are maybe kind of questionable that seem like maybe the seller didn't actually design them themselves. There's a lot of controversy around this, so I won't get into all of that, but I think it's important that you make the customer aware that this is your design or this is your art or, you know, whatever you put into this product, make sure you put it in there. You can also add some specific details in here. So it's important to let the customer know exactly what they'll be getting and say what size it is. And then you want to let them know what to expect when they purchase the file. And then another good thing to do is to cross promote. I only have three items in my shop, so I won't include this. But if you have other items that can kind of go with this, then definitely include that. And we're not going to have personalization for this. And for the price, since it's just a single page, I usually would do like $2 or something. Another thing you could do is take that sheet and just duplicate it so that you have seven of them and just put the headings on top, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And that will make it a little more valuable because it'll be more pages and you could up the price a little bit. For the quantity, the quantity doesn't really matter because these are digital items. So I just put it to something pretty high, like 100 because if it gets sold out, then that can be annoying if you don't realize it. For the category, let's search here for planner and we can put it in calendars and planners. These aren't really specific colors or for a certain occasion, so I'll skip those. And for the tags, we've done these before in some of the previous videos. You're just going to do phrases that people would search for to find your listing. And these are gonna be multi-word phrases. And if you have shop sections, you can do those. But if you're following these tutorials, you might not have a shop section yet since we haven't done a ton of these videos yet. We'll definitely add those in some future videos. And I like to do automatic renewal. Otherwise, the listing might expire and then it's just going to be out of your shop. And then we can click publish. Now I can go down here to where it says sales channels and I'll click on the little Etsy icon here to view my shop. And here's my little planner. That's it for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com.
And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!